Hello everybody, this is James DeBow on Discovering Season 5, dedicated to original people, and we got a special guest on today, N. Zima. Akpan, how you doing my brother? I'm all blessed, how are you James? I'm great anyway, you know, we have your brother in the other day, you yeah, know, yeah. Odoyan, yeah. and we got yourself in today anyway, so, you know, great for Season 5 anyway, and we need some role models to speak mm-hmm. about the black excellence and different things and that. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to deal with your timeline anyway, you know, where um, you're the runner. Yeah. also photographer filmmaker yeah. and a ho- whole lot more and yeah. we're going to deal with the importance of african history near the end anyway yeah. so how are you anyway i'm all good i'm all good i'm all blessed good uh, yeah man just just you know living enjoying life at the moment yeah you know, back in the city because of obviously living in london now isn't it? But yeah back and it's, it's always great to come back every single it's, every single time i come back Something new's happened, like a new building or something's changed. Or oh yeah, it's just, it's I struggle to get crazy. used to it myself. Yeah, it's crazy. You know? I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm coming back and I'm seeing like one way roads that were two way roads. I'm seeing bike lanes. I'm seeing just just new people. Like it's just yeah, it's mad. Like it's just even my, yeah. my area as well. Like you know, mm. it's, like talks is changing as well. Changed like. a lot. Yeah. Well, if you look at it, um, you know, we were having a little discussion earlier mm. about um, we started with speaking on it uh, being ru- a runner. Yeah. And you, you was doing the 800 meters. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah and um, yeah. like obviously you were saying before about like West Africans, mm. long distance runners usually better. Yeah. East Africans usually, yeah. well, they're the long distance where yeah. the short distance are. Yeah. 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 So we could speak on the beginning of when did you start getting into becoming a runner? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So, you know, like since I was a kid, I've always, I've always loved to run in it. Like I used to play football as a kid, but then I just thought, nah, I didn't really like it. Like, Cause I was, I was just that guy who should just run around with the ball on it. But then I mm. thought, nah, this is not really what I kind of enjoy. So then, like you know, I I was always like the quickest kid in school, like in primary school, in year five, I was the quickest. I could become the quickest kid in the whole school. In senior school, like year ten, probably quickest kid in the school as well. Like I've I've, I've always been quick. When I was younger, I used to race all the kids. Everyone in the everyone in the area knows me as the quick kid. Never like, lost a race. Nah, probably. I think I probably <laughs> lost like one race, one or two, one or two races by like people that were older than me. You know. But, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, that's bound to happen, isn't it? Happen, isn't it? But, but that's what helps like, you get faster. People, yeah, 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 people true, get faster. True, true. Like, I've, 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 I was always the, the quick kid yeah. in the area. You know? So then, like, yeah, yeah, just always enjoyed running. You know? But funny enough, though, like I was told, I was always told to go to Harvest. Like when I was in year six, I got invited to go to Harvest to run. Yeah. Obviously, because of my household, single parents and that, my mum was always in work, innit? Mm. And, like, obviously, my my sister was just, she's older, but she was only, like, year eight or year nine at the time, innit? So, she was doing, like, her own thing. So, I never, I never never really had, like, the support to take me every day to the Harriers to train, innit? So, yeah. I said to myself, let me just wait till I'm old, innit? Let me just carry on playing out with my mates, just having fun, being a kid, innit? Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, but funny enough though, I never really started going training until I was like 16 and it. Even though I could make my own way, like when I was in year seven, I never really thought about it until like I was like 16 and I thought, you know what, I'm actually going to go, give it a go. So then I started off as a sprinter, but then I was always like, I was like, I call myself a hybrid because I was, I can do like sprints and I can do all the long distance. I was able to do everything like in the hybrids, I'd do like every, si- in the competitions, I'd be doing like every single distance from like 100 meters to like a, a 3k steeplechase. I just do everything in it. And then, uh, one day I thought, let me do 800, and I'd, I'd done a few 800s, and because I was ra- racing a few guys at the club, got a bit, bit competitive, and I thought, you know what, I'm very good at this, let me give this a proper go, innit? so I gave 800 meters the proper go, but uh, yeah, as I was saying, like, one of my biggest probably regrets is probably not focusing more on the 400 meters. 400 meters, yeah. Yeah, because obviously, when it comes to running, like, you got to, it's all about n- nature, like, naturally my body is, is sprints the body in it so got the genetics naturally I'll be, yeah. I can flow much more better out of 400 rather than 800 even though 800 meters class is sprint it's a, it's a hybrid sprint do you get me so I reckon I would have been a better 400 meter runner but because I'd done so many eights when I was growing up I thought let me just carry on in it because I don't live with the regret of what if I could have done this what if I could have done that because when I set my mind to something mm. it's got to do it and I've got to stick to it so then, that's really how it starts, isn't it? But I kind of wish it's done before. Now, you tell me you went to South Africa. Yeah, yeah. That sounded interesting. Yeah. And you were there not just for us to do athletics mm. while you're running. Yeah. You did also photographing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, filmmaking yeah, or, or yeah, something. Yeah, tell yeah, us a little yeah. bit about that, please. So, yeah, I went, I was in uh, South Africa on a training camp with my group, innit? Because, yeah. uh, obviously, I trained in London now with a group called The Run Yard. So, 
very, very good professional group. Got a few Olympians, world championship guys. So I'm trained with a very, very strong group. Mm. Yeah, so I went to South Africa there and I was just on a proper intense training camp. But at the same time, though, I had always, like, you know, want to go out, do a bit of sightseeing, just just all the time. Got my, cam- my phone camera, just filming, you know, just the scene of me, just, like, you know, taking it in for what it is. Because, like, when you go to South Africa, you just start thinking, wow, like, this is, this is mad. Like, you just walking around and you just seeing like mountains and like you know, just the like the actual ocean. Like you know what's mad? I was I, I was walking around, seeing the ocean. Went for a drive and we stopped off somewhere. And then I just looked and I thought that's the ocean. And then over there is Antarctica. Like it was actually like mad. I thought that's this is like the last stop before I can get to the other end of the world. Isn't it? It's right. It's okay. I was, okay. I just yeah I just yeah yeah yeah, I yeah, like, yeah. I just like yeah. mind blown. I was like wow, like this is amazing. Like South Africa is a very underrated country I would say because anytime you see South Africa you, just, like, you start seeing about all the crime and stuff like that even That's though it's right, a, yeah, yeah. it a bad country hmm. it's amazing like, I personally didn't want to come back if I never had responsibilities I don't think I would have came back well I've heard it. I mean yeah. I would like to try South Africa I mean you've heard the stereotypes about things yeah, that would still yeah, yeah. races from yeah, yeah. going back to the day but yeah. I, sometimes there's different experience people can have for example when you're born in a country yeah. you're a citizen of that country mm. and it might work a little differently. But when you're just there to travel or you're just going yeah. on business, providing obviously you're not going down to Orange County, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> pl- them places and that, yeah. you, I would have thought you'd be all right in that. Yeah. But you enjoyed it, you, you didn't want to come back. No, no, I didn't want to come back at all. Like, it was just... Spectacular place. Just, yeah. Like, even yeah. when I was there, I was thinking, oh, man, I wish I, I wish I was born in, like... I, I was thinking to myself, I wish I was born in Africa. Mm. So then, like... I, so then now at my age now I've got the confidence to go back and live there because I know exactly what it's like. But because I've ne- I've be- I've been co- so I've been Sierra Leone I've been South Africa before. But yeah. Because I've never lived there I don't really know like how it is there. So mm. a part of me is like comfortable in the UK, but I don't want to be comfortable in the UK because I know this is not really me. Like I don't really yeah. As I'm getting older, I'm kind of thinking oh, I can't. I don't really like living in the UK. It's just like it's expensive for no reason. The foods the foods are not not great and. The lack of sunshine is not really great for me. Like yeah. when, I, when I was in South Africa and I was in the sun all the time, I was like, "Yo, like my body felt different." Oh, like, you I feel just, strong in the sun. I just felt, I felt strong. I, f- I yeah. just felt, I felt, like, I, felt like, I felt alive in it. Like yeah. there's no such thing as like being too cold. No, all the time walking around t-shirts and shorts, and then the food, <sighs> mate. Like you go to the vineyards, like there's so many, so people have got like acres of lands. Like I'm talking about acres, and like take you on tours. You get like. There's fresh grapes just there, and these guys make their fresh wine, fresh grapes, fresh fruit, pomegranates, everything just there. Like, and you eat, and you're like, wow, like, this is actually fresh. Like, yeah, yeah. You, that's that, it. I was getting, st- like, I was getting top of the line steaks. Like, you know, we go to a steakhouse and you pay bare money for the steak, mm. paying like a f- paying five quid for a top end ribeye, but like the steak was like, like nothing I've never tasted before. Like, it's the best food ever. Like, you're just getting like. No, just like your typical rice and veg, but it, it didn't taste like you, like the Tesco thing. It tasted like just fresh, clean. clean. I was just like, when I when I was eating, I felt good as well. Like t- compared to you, like when I'm going like little on that, like cause everything's because England's a, this the city, the country of imports, and then like because you yeah. don't grow anything, everything's imported. So like, you know what I mean? Like the food really ain't the best. Now just like funny that oh, though. Man, interesting so. because when you look at that, like we are getting ripped off here when you want to buy a house. Oh. You want to buy anything here. Just look at, like, for example, you buy land in Africa. I know people got land in different parts of Mm. Africa. And they encouraged me so much, said, you know, buy your land, pay your builders, Mm. they'll build on it, Mm. and then it could be done in. You know, as long as you have the trustworthy people who are going to be doing it, that's Mm. the main thing, you know. And, yeah, I mean, for yourself as well, Sierra Leone, and also Nigerian roots as well, just like myself, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, what tribe in Nigeria? Yeah, my dad's from Calibre. Calibre tribe, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tribe, yeah. I'm yeah, the yeah, Ejo, yeah. yes, yeah. you know what I'm saying. I mean. But um, yeah, so anyway, now moving on to being a photographer. Mm. Where did this begin, being a photographer, leading into being a filmmaker? Oh, uh, yeah, this is this. Where did this start? You, seven years you've been in London, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, so okay. this, this is a funny story, you know? so uh, there's, a, there's a guy who I've got to pay my respects to, his name's called Johan Moore. Yeah, um, he's called himself Mr. Green, you know? so he used to run a YouTube channel back in the day. Yeah, making them his videos and stuff like that. So he'd work with like Wiley and other people. So I used to watch his videos and think, yeah, this is amazing. Isn't it? So kind of like you know, it's kind of inspired me to do it. Mm. But like, I just didn't know how to 
get into it. I just thought, yeah, this is sick. I want to, I want to get into it because he was like really smashing the scene in it. And then mm-hmm. uh, just one day I was in school and I just sat there and I was very confused, like because at the same time as I wanted to do like the filmmaking photography, because I was a sportsman, I thought, oh, I'm probably just going to go uni and study sports science in it because I, I like sports. But like, okay, I just I was just doing it because I I didn't know kind of what I wanted to do. Yeah. So then just one day I, I thought, let me miss school because I used to work in the. Uh, Echo Arena. I know it's called the MNS Arena, but back in the day, it's back in the day, yeah, it's called the Echo Arena. So I used to work in, in there, just right. doing like you know hospital, hospitality and stuff like that. Yeah. So I missed one day of school, and then uh, with my boy, we went to work, and then we finished working, and then we usually get the bus home. But I thought, nah. We said, nah, let's walk home. But then we walked home a different way. I don't know why. It's like so, something's telling me to walk this way. So then we walked eh, this some mad way. It's I forgot the road. What the road's called? I think it's Duke Street. Down Duke Street, and then we seen uh, the Liverpool Media Academy. So I said to my boy, "Oh, what's happening there? Can I go, let me wait for me? I want to check check in there." So then I ra- I ran inside the academy and spoke to people at this desk. Like, How do I apply for your level three course? And they were like, "No, no, 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 no! Don't apply for the level three. Apply for the H and D because you're old enough." But then they said, "You've only got one day to apply." So I was like, I was panicking. So I, fo- I phoned my mentor at the time because I was in a thing called Aim Higher. Uh, so a former mentor, his name's called Jimmy. Jimmy from the area, he's got like a big afro. Yeah, I think Jimmy? I know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Jimmy. working in the as the. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. the guy, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah I respect to Jimmy. He's watching this. Uh, Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy's my guy. Salute so, to like, yeah, yeah, I He's know actually Jimmy. Uh, helped me a lot, but he's my mentor at the time, Jimmy. So I phoned Jimmy and said, Jimmy, uh, I've got an opportunity to uh, do like a H&D, like the first two years of my uni. Mm. And I really want to do it because it's filmmaking. And I've got no experience in filmmaking, but I just want to do it. So then uh, he was like, okay, come. Meet me in the uh, lodge lane and we can, we can help out. So we met uh, at the Sakuna lodge lane and we literally ripped my personal statement together. Like I was telling him what I want to do and he helped me with my personal statements. And that same night I applied for the H&D. And a like, uh, couple of days later I got an email back saying I'd been accepted. Can I come in for it for the uh, interview process? And then from there, you know, fast forward a few months later, I got onto the course. Wow. So I was on the course, had no clue about filming or nothing. I just, I just had a vision. I just had no clue how to use nothing in it. Okay, so when yeah. I was there, I, I just learned how to use like all the editing software, all the cameras, everything in it over the past two years. And then that's how really the journey kind of began in it. Wow. So, you know, when it comes to cameras now, yeah. I mean, um, we had a little bit of a problem before we got this yeah. talk started. Yeah. You know, they had to fix the cameras yeah. and that. So, when it comes to cameras and filmmaking, how hard is it really to be able to... I mean, it could just sound simple. Hold mm. the camera, press start. and It's not even that simple, though, is nah, it? Nah, it's not that simple. No. Focus. I mean, how hard is it to, when you've got it, make sure you get it right, nice and crisp, yeah. the picture? So, uh, from experience, I would say know all your technical aspects of the camera. So, learn your camera inside out. Because I know there's a lot of people that will get expensive cameras thinking that it's going to do better but it's not just get a normal camera learn your camera inside out learn the settings and how different settings work and how different settings can create the best look for you mm. and then once you know that camera inside out and you know the basic settings of the camera basic basic settings of lighting and how light affects the image then you can start upgrading to the different cameras because the different cameras can offer you different solutions but i say learn your camera inside out first yeah regardless in it don't do nothing stupid don't be going to buy an expensive 10 grand camera that can do the same as a normal two grand, two grand camera because yeah. you're just going to waste your money. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so now also, um, going from photography yeah. into the filmmaking now, yeah, yeah. where was the switch? How did that happen from photography to... Oh, so, yeah, so the ca- it, was, it was kind of, I kind of done them both at the same time, innit? Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So kind of, I kind of done them both at the same time, but then obviously, quite the hybrid camera that can do both. I kind of, Dibble and dabbled into the photography because, uh, as as a director of photography, a DP, the calling the people that do f- make films, is it's important to know photography because like, I I I've always said photographers make the best DPs because they know how to cap- capture something in a small space. You get me? So like, say that they've got like a small space, they can make something look great in a small space from one image. So yeah, if you've got that skill, you'd be great as a DP. At the same time, though, as a DP, lane lighting as well because like. I was just thinking of lightning as well. Yeah, yeah. so you've yeah. got, got to understand how the light affects a certain spot and how to get the best thing from that certain spot, if that makes sense. Yeah. So then, like, 
I done both because I wanted to be great at DP. So I, I learned how to do photography and I learned how to like manipulate the image just so I can be better as a DP. Yeah. So I, I done them both hand in hand as well. And okay. I, that's how really I got better. So I done like a lot of street f- mm. photography, a lot of studio photography. At the same time, I done a lot of street filming. And f- Did you just go and buy your own camera? Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Long, now with this camera you were saying. Yeah. Rec- records and also yeah, take takes about, pictures yeah, 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 yeah. how much roughly do you have to spend to get something like that yeah so back in the day i spent like like six seven hundred quid on the camera okay well, obviously i used me still alone in it but yeah yeah, yeah. but there's like, some people who could spend two thousand pounds yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, but, just, but it's I, good to know like what's yeah, a reasonable yeah, price yeah, yeah yeah but as i but the camera i got back in the day was it's cheap now it's like a canon 600d in it but i'll probably gone up uh, now or nah, it's just way, oh the it's way way down. Down. Yeah, 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 way down but yeah, like it's it was a at the time, it was a, it was the spot on camera, it? but I just said I got that camera and I learned it inside out, like just different, like because I'd never known the camera, I just learned it inside out, learned from people that do filmmaking on my course, because there's some guys I looked up to in my course that were like, they're just, just doing a, doing a madness with the film, and like yeah. you just see them like, wow, like, but they had one of them had like a 5D Mark III at the time, and at that yeah. time that was like 2000 and. 12, 13, that camera was like the, the big boy camera. Yeah. The well, I noticed the, the cameras these days are getting smaller, just yeah. like phones yeah. and that. Because yeah. I remember years of these big, massive cameras and yeah. a big microphone on them. But, but that's because, no, no, like, as a cinematographer, no one wants like, a big No one wants, no one wants that. a big setup because it's heavy. They want something thing. that's mobile, but with the yeah. same sensor. Because with the with cameras, it's not about the build or whatever, it's about the sensor. People need to understand, like, the set. So when people are like, yeah, ain't getting this camera because it's got so and so megapixel, don't worry about the megapixel. Just worry about the sensor and don't worry about if the camera's 4K or not because not many places, not many screens and stuff, stuff can actually handle true 4K because when you see stuff that's like 8K, the camera's probably like at most two point, like 3.2K. Yeah. They just, they just uh, duplicate the pixels to make it sharper to give you an 8K image, but it's actually not 8K. It's actually not true 8K. It's, it's a fake 8K, but yeah. it's a good unique setup point. you get me? So then like Ivory cameras... Of on the best cameras on, on top of the line cameras like Ivory cameras have got like three point two k, and that's the that's 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 a great that's great. Four you got four k cameras which are some cameras have true four k some don't. It just depends on your sensor. But when you get a camera, always check the sensor and the dynamic range of the camera because dynamic range is important because that can uh, helps you depict your shadows, the highlights. So like, have you ever had a camera and you try and take a photo but the sky is blurred out? It's just white. Because yeah. the dynamic range in the camera is not the great. So you need to get a camera that can uh, take a picture of something that's dark, but at the same time catch the stuff and have you in the middle. Yeah, it's yeah. It's perfect, in it? So I remember when I was younger there, yeah. we, you know, we, we had a camera like years ago. Mm. It was like the old style cameras and yeah. that. And uh, me uncle was very good at using the camera. Mm. And he said, I can make you disappear on the camera. Mm. So I'm sitting there like a kid. And I'm waiting to disappear. Mm. But I'm actually disappeared on the camera, so I'm getting all upset. Then when I watched it back, mm. uh, you know, where it's just got myself sitting here, then he was able to make me disappear. Yeah. Oh, that was an amazing feature, that. <laughs> I mean, that was back yeah. then, so imagine well, what you've got now. Yeah, yeah Teleport yeah. or something. Yeah, because uh, I think nowadays the new fashion's film. Like, f- film, nothing can get better than film. Film is the, probably the best type of format you can ever get. Like, it's because it's just... I think film was ahead of its time, in my opinion. Cause yeah, yeah. I got a lot of people went to switch digital, but digital can't hack film. Like, just okay, film is just like I think film's perfect, in my opinion. Like, just dynamic range, colors, feel, texture. It's just there. You can't get it with digital. You really can't get it. Like, wow, that's like it's a, so like, analog. Analog, we're talking. Yeah, in it. Is analog yeah, yeah, better? Yeah, much better. Yeah, if you know, if you if you know how to film with analog, then if you know how to yeah, use it, yeah. It's just, just there. Like films, amazing. Like, wow. I've even noticed that a lot of a lot of stuff nowadays looks got that film look. Yeah, like, a, a lot of people using like the small film cameras in it because they just know that like film, it's got like a vibe. It's got like a nice little vibe to it. Colors or yeah, perfect. And just the look and the feel of it just gives you that nice little vibe. That's it? interesting, that. Yeah, because not many people really like digital these days. Like, yeah, you know yeah, that. that kind of switching in it, interesting yeah. because sometimes as we're going forward, mm. we're going backwards in yeah. some ways, and that you Recy- know, recycle stuff in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you have it. to tell me about anyway some of the films mm. or musicians mm. that you you're being involved with. with me, you know, oh, being a lot, give us some names or you know. tell us the names of the movies yes. or whatever. So let me let me let me let me go back a couple of years in it. So okay, let's hear this one then. About a couple of years still. So uh, yeah, man. So obviously I I moved to London 2015. 
Yeah, seven years ago. Seven years ago. Fast forward, that when uni, just done, started doing a directing and editing thing, worked with a few artists, etc., etc., etc. And then uh, I remember I got a kind of got a, br- not a I'll, I wouldn't call it a big break in there, but I kind of got my first gig uh, with Miss Banks and Nana Rogues. Uh, Miss Banks and Nana Rogues. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, our editor I know kind of recommended me to someone else. And because he couldn't do it, he said, Oh, yeah, I know editor that can do it. So the producer got involved contacted me and said yo can you do a video for me so i said yeah i can do it then you then yeah so be editing that video then he contacted me again while i was editing this video said i got another video if you can do it for me and there's a guy called rams yeah so that was like 2018 or 19 so i edited both the videos it went well and then uh, yeah that was it never never edited a music video for like a whole year because i got a job and then just job as like a content creator, editor class in London at the time. So then I was thinking how to make money, etc., mm. etc. And then like yeah, last year, uh, last year at this time, I kid, I kid you not, after the pandemic, I done one video uh, with a director. That's like my my mate now, isn't it? he's he's big, you know, same producer for uh, Miss Banks again. Well, wow. then after after Miss Banks, I got another one with uh, Potter Paper, uh, Suspect. Uh, he also got a few Afrobeat artists. Uh, Afrobeat, bu- yeah. Bu- a guy called Buju, a guy called King Promise. Done two videos with him. Uh, who else got M. Huncho? Wow, the list goes on. I can't even think. What? And then I got some rock. Done some rock video with some Nova Twins. Done uh, a video with a guy called Elderbrook. He uh, edited the video with some German artist called uh, Kelvin Colts. Wow. The video's not out yet, but uh, he's, a, he's a big independent artist. He also missed us. Uh, George, Izzy Bizu, Doi D W E. Wow. Uh, Plenty of people. Me, I've, I've kind of lost count. Uh, Big Tobes. He also did a guy called Lights. Wow. Uh, me, I've got. So how did got these people? <laughs> how did these people reach you? How, uh, or, or do you, you what you do? You advertise yourself or you? No, nah, so- no. Nah, it's, it's just uh, I, tr- I I I, I kind of try and go the old fashioned way in it with weird the mouth and then like and yeah I, yeah. And I try go with people. I try to go to uh, like people see the quality of work. Right, then, like, yeah. I don't mean to be that guy in it, but there's a lot of people out there that that chase the clout. Yeah, so, like, yeah, yeah. They yeah, would yeah, do yeah, something yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of average in it, but because they know people, they'll be like, "Yeah, I'm this, 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 this." So okay, they would get jobs okay. in it, but not really the best. Yeah. So I try and I don't try and shout myself out as the guy that like, "Oh, I'm the guy." In it. I try mm. and just come up myself and be like, "Yeah, can't even like my work. We can work in it." Yeah, and it kind of works for me in it because like I get like a lot of quality projects that come through because people like how I work and how I do stuff in it. Do you get me? So, mm. yeah, th- th- I just go by the w- where the mouth and just by like my networks and my contacts in it that I work with in it, really. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, how, that's the music kind of It's You know stuff. what sounds very exciting as well, you know, like yeah. being around like musicians um, and yeah. filmmakers and, you know. Yeah. Also, you must get some creative ideas yourself where you think, you know what, could you ever write your own movie or yeah. have you ever thought about doing anything like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in terms of Movies, me directing the movie. I've, I'm gonna wait till I'm a bit further down. <coughs> a bit further down the line, cause mm. uh, the short film stuff is is very, very, very technical, and it's kind of hard to do. Cause like any anyone any editor that's watching this knows how to edit a short film. It, it's actually long. How long's a short film? What yeah. like when you say short film? Be anything from like five to fifteen minutes, isn't it really? Right, yeah, okay. It just, it just depends on it because okay. it's, it's short and so then you can you can make like a short film about just sitting on the couch that can be like five minutes or ten yeah. minutes or you can make like an actual feature film which is like half an hour. Do you get me? Yeah. Like it's it ranges in it, but it's very 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 hard to do in it. So then like it's one of them that like you need to have need to be constantly doing them to get into them, and you've got to enjoy editing a short film. Like mm. me personally, I don't really enjoy editing short films because it's it's long. I like to do the the fast paced the fast pace yeah any energetic stuff in there short okay. films are good yeah because it, it, it brings in money and you get your places but i'm not ready for that just yet personally mm. i'm i'm i want to focus more on like the commercial the music side because the music video music video stuff gets your networks and you meet new people that's right yeah and then the commercial side brings you in money and you meet like the other people so in in the scenes it's like you got the music video people that are just like trendy and all that stuff then you yeah got, like, the commercial people that you pop like professional people that like you know, you meet like the big dogs and that just mm. do all the mad, that do all the mad stuff in there. So, so you kind of like that's good. That so you you yeah. um <clears throat> you're not limited. You, you you've got different direction you can go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that yeah. that that seemed like more 
that's better that you know more options yeah, yeah, for yeah, you than that you know yeah so where would you say now from where you are right now mm. to where you see yourself going or where you want to go to yeah <clears throat> what's your plans would you say would you like is it about trying to connect with people in america yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was like, well, mm. what's it about really like to take it so more with, further? With, with me i recently i recently just started up of my own little company called Buy New Body with my business partner, and yeah. uh, she she's in London as well, and she works in a she's currently working in a in a very good editing studio as well. Excellent. So then, like, uh, we we had a we had a business plan, so we we just thought to ourselves, you know what, yeah, with this stuff, you can't really rush it. As much as we want to do it, we can't really rush it. So I just said to her, you carry on doing you, you make all the, you do all your networks and stuff like that, and then you focus on like, you know, like the long form the long form stuff because she's very good at like all the long form short film type of stuff and then I said I'll focus on like the music stuff get my networks there and try and break into the commercial world and get myself there mm. so then the aim for us really is to have our own have our black owned post production house excellent because there's not many I don't think that, I don't think I don't know any I don't think there's any in it so like we want to have our own black owned post production house that we've we do everything but to, to do that we need networks in it so yeah our main aim is to network in every single f- uh, sector but like uh, my personal aim is to probably have a lot of international connects because I really want to go that's what it's about international international connects Definitely. I really, really want to work with a lot of international people like I really like how like you know people in Berlin or Paris work like, I like their type of content because if you see their type of like you know content like example just music videos that are made in like France yeah are different from here but the, the guys in France oh my gosh if you see their videos made European cinema is better than British cinema hands down like just mm. storyline look colour feel just 10 wow. times better as we were saying before like how a lot of people in Britain just like just the, the simple simplistic simple. They, they try and go the American return as they shouldn't really do that they should need to go like the European because Europeans smash it with the videos like mate like if you see a video you're like what this is mad why didn't we do this but like yeah. we've got the we got the talent and we've got like you know the funds and everything to do that but cause you know people are, are scared to care about numbers rather than creativity. Yeah, it's well... N- it's a numbers game, isn't it? This is the thing, like, I mean, the numbers game and creativity. Mm. I mean, I'm from that era of creativity. We have to be creative. Whatever yeah. we... doesn't matter what you were into. You could be doing music, acting, mm. poetry. It was all about being authentic and original. Nowadays, like you're saying, it's about the views. Numbers, it's just about, just about the numbers, isn't it, you know? Blame social media for that stuff. Yeah, but like I say, you know, c- creativity is... Mm. It's so important. We can't lose that. No, you know, that's because it, it, it's just about, like you say, if it's just about the numbers, then normal people like ourselves can't mm. sit back and watch something and enjoy it. Mm. We've just got to watch it. Oh, yeah, just a business. And yeah, that, you yeah, know, yeah. I want to take it seriously when I'm watching something, I want to learn. Yeah. You know, have you ever thought of, oh, I don't know, maybe you've already been involved in it, anything like a documentary? Have you worked around anyone who deals with documentaries? Uh, not yet. Not yet. But I might I've give you the shout soon anyway yeah, when yeah, I I've, need I've always, be. Yeah, because I've always wanted to. Dude, I've, I when I started filmmaking, mm. I really like documentaries. That's what I wanted to do. I really like to do. So I used to work. I used to do like little projects, like little, just little small little people that just had little things. I used to do like documentary, documentary stuff. So I, I even went to Italy when I was younger, done a little documentary with like just some some some. Uh, I forgot who they called. I think Newport City Council funded some project, and we went there and like in Italy, and, we, and these I documented these guys just making music in Italy. Yeah, from Liverpool, but yeah, it was fun. Like I've always liked doing you know, all that document stuff, and I've, I forgot about that. More options. Well, you know, I might have to give you the shout yeah. in the future. You know, I will. I'll yeah. I'll come with some idea. You know what I do? I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, about yeah, yeah. traveling, meeting the original indigenous yeah, peoples, and yeah, I love that. So that'd be good. That'd be a good little project I, there. And it, it's something different because yeah. sometimes it's about that different thing, mm. not not the mad different thing, the mm. good different things, yeah. especially stuff that's not too highlighted. Like I was showing you the pictures yeah. of some of them tribes in mm. Thailand, Malaysia, Philippines, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're very surprised you're seeing black people yeah, still there. It's mad still there. Yeah, and yeah. this is. This is why it's so important. It's mm. the Africans of Asia is underrated. Yeah, it's so underrated. Africans in the Pacific Islands or wherever we go, mm. and because it's all so underrated, then what people don't know, mm. then they don't know. Mm. So this is why I'm trying to highlight it in this city. You know, um, I feel like I'm promoting African history the most. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? With a passion, though, it's about a passion and coming in with the African mind. Do you know what I'm saying? We can't come in with a slave mind and then think we're going to be educating our people or enlightening our people. Mm. We've got to talk about great things we did. 
this is why on this show, everyone who comes on this show, mm. the highlight of the show is the importance of African history. Yeah. So you as a guest, just like everybody else, why do you think it's important for us to know our history? You know, and you're going to pass it down to your children. Why would you say is is important to know African history? I mean, how can I, how can I, how can I formulate the answer? Uh, how can I say? Is it so, important to know it? Like, and yeah. pass it down? Or so, we, yeah. I reckon it's very important to know history. Like, yeah. everyone needs to know history, in it Because it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's part of you, innit? Do you get me? Yeah. Like, like, you know, when you when people say, oh, yeah, we need to know about African history, black history, it's it, it doesn't start with slavery. Because in school, when you, yeah. when you talk about it, Oh yeah, the slave trade. Nah, nah. We need to go back to you know Asian kingdoms like Timbuktu, the Timbuktu. Old Empire, yeah. Wadi Empire, Nubian Empire. And we need to learn about all that proper history. All that like, empires. I didn't know about that stuff till like when I got older. I thought black history was just like yeah, slavery, and then yeah, after slavery, I thought yeah, that was it. Really. I didn't, I didn't really know about it. I, I, oh, I knew that there was Timbuktu back in the day, but I didn't know. Past that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. as I got older, I started to learn about like you know, Mansa Musa and how he traveled the world and how these guys, like, oh, how's this guy so rich? Mom was just throwing gold, like, like it was pennies, like, yeah, you take this, you take this, you take yeah. this. And then I started to learn about the Moors and how they oh. conquered conquered all of Europe, Portugal, taught, yeah. taught these guys how to bathe and all that stuff. And, and then, even to the point where they went there, mm. taught them all the stuff, and like, yeah, okay, you use good now. Going back, even go Portugal now, you start seeing like you know all the buildings and all the reminiscence of the Moors, how they came to Britain and you know, mm. you know, taught them you know, get me because I I've been some stuff about like how these royalty used to bathe like twice a year, yeah, and then when these guys like how are you bathing twice a year and then that's how like you know all the plagues that came about and then, yeah, well you funny me? you so, said that yeah yeah because the Moors introduced them to baths and yeah. everything and yeah. it, it, everything everything you know, yeah. and they, they sorry, very they, important yeah but they even need to teach people as well like how ancient Greeks and Romans used to go to Ethiopia and in the universities there and how they got Egypt their knowledge and you, know? yeah. you know when people talk about all these Galileo and all stuff like that how mm. do you think these guys learn all that stuff ancient Ethiopia yeah. in the thing back in the day but they will never teach that in it but they think oh yeah this this guy this great this great Greek scholar discovered discovered this nah oh, bro yeah, he never yeah. discovered it he all went to Ethiopia learn from the Africans all these Greek philosophers that you know about space and mathematics and stuff they went to Ethiopia to learn yeah. the universities and the big libraries and they learned that stuff there and went back to the people and taught it back to them but yeah, you never learned that in history I, I had to learn that myself it's like, it's like when you talk oh. about Greek philosophy Greek philosophy mm. got coming from African philosophy yeah. and it might have been changed their own way Yeah, but at the end of the day you know we've got to like keep passing our history on to the mm. generations yeah now people believe like black history and african history there's, there's a misconception here you see yeah, yeah, yeah. and when i really thought about it, this is why i started promoting stuff before as well when i'm hearing people talk about black history mm. i'm listening to them clearly and it basically sounds just whatever we did in 400 years yeah that's black history. Yeah. But then African history is something that goes back from the beginning of millennium, the first of humanity, yeah, yeah, first yeah, civilizations yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and more. So I was like, well, why are we focused on this too much? But that f focus, what we, the slavery, is the most damaging mm. and mentally damaged. Yeah. So when you have a child and you put roots on for them or mm. you tell them about slavery, I think they're too young. To, to know so that, yeah. that's where there has to be a balance yeah. not saying you don't talk about it but we got to talk about yeah. the great things yeah. that we did yeah it's, it's good to understand what happened but yeah yeah because they, they people a lot of kids don't know about like african footprints you know? like you know them when you go south america south america you know, big statues like you know big noses people, the all mix like, in yeah, mexico like, yeah, oh, yeah 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 what's going on there like exactly yeah, I mean, like, oh, that's all people from like generations ago like when they done a little great migration and do you get me like it's yeah, so it, it's so interesting when you start seeing about that stuff, and then like you know when when these guys went to Egypt and started shooting off the noses, didn't it? Because they didn't like how the big noses. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You see yeah. Napoleon <laughs> shot the noses off and that. Yeah, like oh yeah, we don't, we don't want people to know this. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah, yeah they don't even know about this. And then they start to cover up all this. You just like why would you why would you do that for? And yeah, then, and then like you know they just don't, I don't think they really want black you need to know in it because that's it. It's scary for them. Well, it? this is why we have to like not just focus on the negative thing. We have to focus on the positive thing, mm, which mm, go back way further mm, anyway. Mm. And you know, um, that's what it's about anyway. Pushing it forward, positive history, and yeah. at the end of the day, we're here to teach the world. Yeah, that's what that's yeah, what's yeah, about. People, yeah. everyone's got to be educated on African history. Yeah. Otherwise, what's yeah. the point? Because you, you know what I'm saying. You you can't go to the library and find a book on African history. Like you got to research this book, then that book, digging like deep book, at and times. You got to like you know, dish 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 dish, try and, and make like some sort of hypothesis of kind of 
what was there and what was not there because yeah. s- there's, there's certain people out there that know stuff in it but it's, it's locked away in the cabinet deep in it because they, they don't want you to know in it because well, we've got to keep digging and keep searching yeah, yeah, yeah. you know we can't wait for other people to do it and mm. then you know it's passing on to the youth if the youth get this history yeah. if everybody starts teaching the youth from when they're yeah. growing up then yeah that'll be easy yeah. there'll be a lot of more people are getting into yeah, academia more people are getting into African spirituality yeah. you know because we only have negative things about African spirituality but yeah, at the end of the day it's yeah, positive you make it positive you true. make it negative yeah, you make it negative it's true because you know when these guys like oh yeah you're doing judge or voodoo do you know all that stuff is kind of a myth like it's a myth the judge and the voodoo is like, is like spiritual prayers yeah. and do you know all that uh uh, judge and voodoo come from the uh, slave the slave masters that used to that used to use uh, black people as zombies in their film and that's right like that. yeah, 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 yeah just yeah. like yeah what, what do you mean it's, it's bad you guys created the concept of judge being bad and zombies into your films and then from there just carried it on but and all religions bad. if you look at main religions around the world all came out of africa you know they've like took what we lit and made it into a religion yeah basically you know, so. yeah. But um, it's been a great conversation today, you know, yeah, and um, hopefully, you know, maybe we do it again yeah, or we, yeah, yeah. maybe I can work with you in the future on some documentary no, no, and that. No, no, I, I, I would really, yeah, really oh, enjoy yeah. that. I've got to mention one thing as well about, yeah. uh, about like, you know, when you, when you spoke to me about what I want to do, my business, stuff like that. Oh, as yeah. Well as, as well as I want to have my own black post-production house, I've got to mention the most important thing. I want to give out apprenticeships as well to, uh, Excellent. to young, to young black filmmaker yeah. kids as well because I, Obviously, me as a as a black guy, I didn't really have the opportunity to do it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, would, I just want to give back to like you know kids that that want to get into it. To give get them more of a chance in that. Yeah, because you know you know how you know how the, you know how the roads are. Of isn't course, it? Like, of course. When 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 you're a kid, about about a youth club or nothing to do. Yeah, it's kind of hard because totally right. It is. When I was growing up, I, I had the unity and the Methodist in it. Yeah. So like, kind of went there. Yeah. But, like nowadays, I don't even think they're kind of still youth clubs in it. So you start seeing all these little kids on the road. So. But a lot it. of them are very talented as well. Yeah. So, and I want to give out apprenticeships to them type of kids that want to learn. Wanna that want to learn. Yeah, wanna that's br- important. I want to bring them on sets, teach them how to do stuff because you never know, man. Like, it could be very creative. Yeah, so that's one of, that's one of, that's one of the things I really, really want to do. In it. That's why I'm trying hard, me hard to kind of establish the business with like the international connection. In it. So mm. teach them like anyone could do in it. And exactly. Have, and like, I can be that guy that can just plug them in it because I don't mind doing the hard work, but I don't plug them like, yeah, come on, you want to do this? I've got a guy in Berlin that can help you out. Fly out, go. Pay Excellent. You want to go to America? Do it. Want to work on me? Come. I want to be... All positive. I'll be that guy. Just help them out, isn't it? Really? Well, good luck with that because, you know, you've got the right head on you and yeah. I can only see you going fed into the... You yeah. know, you're still young. You're only 28, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, you've got yeah, plenty yeah. of years and that. Yeah. But yeah. I want to thank you anyway, MZ, yeah. MZ, yeah. You know, um, it's been great today. I've learned a lot of you and it's been very exciting speaking about movies and um, mm. especially from the perspective you're coming from, you run the business behind it. And yeah, yeah. It, you're not just playing in an average field, you no, know, no, you're no. trying to further yourself and then yeah. if you can, you can further yeah. other people's, Again, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a tough tough field out there, no, but you know what I mean. Do you have any social media you want to give out, anything? Yeah, uh, just uh, follow my follow my main page uh, at Enzima Akpan and then you can follow my my director page and Edison page buy new body post and buy new body so I forgot to mention before I do direct as well I direct videos mid videos and other stuff as well so that's buy new body and then mm. buy new body post is the post house that I'm going to create so they're kind of in the same company but one just post production one just directing in it, so. yeah you're doing it all anyway and I like well, that I you know throw, I, throw all cards out why not I see what comes back yeah, I remember before I just said if you, you know if you want to do something you got to learn stuff as a director you got to learn how to edit so when you're on set you just know exactly how to cut your film yeah you to be a photographer learn about lighting learn your camera inside out to get the best thing test yourself go into small spaces that are not creative at all and make something from that creative space That's yeah get better uh well i want to thank you very much yeah. anyway and zima yeah. you know i've then enjoyed today anyway you know yeah. so this is james the bow on discovering season five dedicated to original peoples and we are here but thank you very much there bless you brother excellent <laughs>